Alright, today we've got a television that we're going to disassemble. This is a model 39PF L2608F7. Manufactured in April 2013. We're not getting any power, so the first thing we're going to do is to take the back cover off of the unit and see what we can do to diagnose this system. Now when you're working on these, you want to generally use a anti-static wristband when you're dealing with electronic components. Use extreme caution when you plug this in while it's open because you never want to get electrocuted. It's 112 volts. Uh, let's see here. And 12 volts. Okay, we're good there. And what we're going to do here is we're going to visually inspect the capacitors for any that are bulged out or obviously damaged and they all do look fine. So what we'll do is we will check the output coming off of the power supply board using a meter and if it does not look like there is any power output coming off of this power supply board then that means we definitely have a power supply board failure. At this point we have determined that there is no output coming out of the power supply board. The next phase of diagnosing this issue would be to test the fuse to see if there is any power output that's being passed through the fuse and there is not which can mean one of two things either this device was hit by a power surge or there is a faulty component on the power board what we're gonna do is go ahead and take this board out so that we can physically remove the fuse from that power board and see if we're able to test it that way just to verify it is bad. Now that we've removed this fuse we're going to test it again just to be sure that it is in fact bad and when you look at your meter readout it should be pretty close to zero ohms. As you can see it is very obviously open because it is not doing anything on here until my leads touch each other. But if this fuse was working properly, you should get the same reading on your meter as you would with your leads touching each other, which would be 0 0.3 ohms in this case. So what we would what we want to do is to replace this fuse with one of the same rating a 2.5 amp 250 volt All right, fuse. By now we figured out that this fuse is definitely bad I went ahead and put another fuse in place and ended up with similar results the fuse popped which means that there's definitely a failed component on this board I did look up the service manual for the board but in the process I also was able to find one of the replacement power boards for a very reasonable price so I'm recommending that we replace the entire power board instead of just the individual component on the board as it's probably more cost effective to the customer